This conference will now be recorded. Hey everyone, it's Jody Collado with Wellspring Solutions. I hope you're doing well today. Wellspring Solutions is a nonprofit agency that offers home and community based services to older adults in Guilford County. With our memory care center, uh, four connections and memory club sites, home care, caregiver education, and support. And if you need some further information about our services, I'll be sharing with, with them with you on our last slide. So let me ask you, have you ever forgotten where you laid your glasses down, where you dropped your keys? Maybe you forgot where you parked or where you put your phone. Well, fortunately, there are some things that you can do, and we'll be reviewing them today, that can help you to improve your memory. Uh, diet, physical and mental exercises, staying socially connected, and other lifestyle choices all play a role in your success. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be talking about brain healthy diet first. And let's see, brain healthy diet. So there are many foods that can help your brain stay healthy and it can improve memory and concentration. Some foods have antioxidants that help protect your brain from damage. Omega-3s play a role in sharpening memory and improving mood, as well as protecting your brain against decline. Others contain nutrients that support memory and brain development. You may have heard of the Mediterranean diet, which has some heart healthy benefits. It emphasizes fish, fruits and vegetables, nuts, olive oil, avocados, while limiting red meat. Research suggests it may slow cognitive decline in older adults. It's just unclear which parts of the diet might protect brain function. More research is needed, but nonetheless, eating a healthy diet is important to stay physically and mentally fit. So let's start off with first part of the day, eating breakfast. Eating breakfast presents an opportunity to choose foods that may boost your memory further. The calories you take in at breakfast help fuel your brain. But don't eat too many calories in the morning as it could get in the way of your ability to concentrate. Eating whole grains such as brown rice, barley, uh, grain, whole grain breads and pastas can reduce the risk of heart disease by promoting good blood flow to the brain. Fatty fish like salmon, trout, tuna, sardines, they have rich sources of omega-3 fatty acids. And nuts and seeds contain brain-boosting nutrients like vitamin E, healthy flat fats, and plant compounds. Green tea contains caffeine that boosts brain function as well as protecting brain-protecting antioxidants. We all know fruits and vegetables are healthy for you. And it's good to have a colorful plate of food. Fruits and veggies are packed with antioxidants that may delay brain aging and improve memory, including blueberries, kale, broccoli, spinach and oranges, and others. Dark chocolate and cocoa powder are packed with a few brain boosting compounds, including flavonoids and caffeine. So again, a healthy diet is very important for overall health, but the foods you eat can also boost your brain power. So let's look at some lifestyle tips that can also help boost your cognitive health. At any age, getting a good night's sleep supports brain health. And sure, a good night's sleep makes you just overall feel better, but it's also necessary to make a memory stick so it can be recalled in the future. Not getting enough sleep, sleeping poorly, and sleep disorders in general can lead to trouble with memory, concentration, and other cognitive functions. So prioritizing sleep is important. Keeping hydrated with water can improve concentration and maintain memory function while increasing blood flow and oxygen to your brain. Stress may certainly increase the risk for cognitive impairment. So it's very important to think about the activities that can reduce your stress. And what are some things that you can try? Managing stress through deep breathing or mindfulness meditation. Those are two areas that we focused on in our video library. And staying connected to those 
uh, maintaining close-knit relationships. You're also more likely to maintain cognitive function in later life. Signing up for a class, getting together with friends to play cards or volunteering can help you to feel less isolated. Research has associated social isolation and loneliness to higher risks for a variety of physical and mental issues, including cognitive decline. During periods, though, when you can't physically social interact, FaceTime and Zoom, for example, can at least let you share some laughs and some quality time with family and friends. Giving up smoking is so important. Evidence shows that smoking increases risk of cognitive decline. Quitting smoking can reduce that risk to levels comparable to those who have not smoked. So let's talk now about exercising, both physical and mental exercises. First, we'll talk about exercising the body and the benefits. Exercising the body boosts blood flow to the brain. Studies have shown it can increase the size of the hippocampus. That's the part of the brain responsible for memory. Exercising three or more times a week has been linked to a lower risk for dementia. Aerobic exercise, such as brisk walking, is thought to be more beneficial to cognitive health than non-aerobic stretching and toning exercise, but studies are ongoing. Federal guidelines recommend that all adults get at least 150 minutes of physical activity each week. Physical exercise can also boost memory and thinking indirectly by improving mood and sleep and by reducing stress and anxiety. Lack of exercise and other physical activity may increase your risk of diabetes, heart disease, depression and stroke, all of which can harm the brain. So let's talk about exercising the brain. Research has shown that mental stimulation is an important way to develop a stronger and healthier brain keeps your mind thinking and actively working. Many of the mental exercises common with seniors come in the form of games, such as crossword puzzles, Sudoku. These games work different quadrants of the brain, which is essential if you wanna keep your senses alert. They can also be motivating, challenging, and just fun. So these puzzles can improve focus, concentration, and memory skills. Activities that challenge and focus the brain help organize and build new connections within the brain itself. Learning new things and challenging your mind may have short and long-term benefits for your brain. You can never be too young or too old to learn something new. How about reading a how-to book or trying a new recipe? Maybe trying a craft or a hobby that you haven't done before and maybe changing the way you do something. If you're right-handed, Try the activity with your left hand. You may be very familiar with online brain fitness games designed for seniors. They are designed to help stimulate the frontal lobe and can challenge you while working out your brain. Please just be wary of claims that playing certain computer and online games can improve your memory and other types of thinking. While these activities are mentally stimulating, their long-term benefits are still being debated. Next. I'd like to talk to you about the Memory Fitness Program out of UCLA Longevity Center. Wellspring Solutions is licensed to offer this six-week program and we'll be doing so again soon. The program focuses on the four brain healthy lifestyle strategies found to lower the risk for dementia, physical conditioning, stress reduction, healthy diet, mental exercise and cognitive training. These are the very areas that we have reviewed. You may want to check out the book, Two Weeks to a Younger Brain by Dr. Gary Small. This book is done and associated with the six week series. So let's talk about the main strategy that Memory Fitness Program teaches and it's the look, snap and connect strategy. In order for information to move from your short-term memory into your long-term memory, you need to actively focus to the information. So as I mentioned, it's common to misplace things, but sometimes you can think, well, is it a memory issue 
or did I not pay attention in the first place? And that's why I can't recall something. So the first part is to look, to pay attention, train your brain to remember the details. Then you wanna do the next step, which is snap. You're gonna to return to the image that you saw. Again, you're paying attention and you're gonna create a mental snapshot of what you want to remember. And this can be something real or imagined, but the more vivid the image, the more it's gonna stick in your memory. And then you wanna connect, you wanna to link together your mental snapshots so you can recall the connection later. So a practical example could be trying to recall where you parked at a shopping center, or maybe you're at the airport. So an example could be that let's say you parked and you look, you have to consciously and mindfully pay attention and you see the closest pole that you are parked to is the number three and the letter B. So you have to remember three B. Well, what you could do using look, snap and connect is to visualize three big bumblebees above or around the car. You wanna use your senses. You wanna hear the buzzing of the bees. You wanna see those bees flying around, the three bumblebees buzzing around your car. And that will help you remember that you parked at 3B. Another um, strategy that we can use practically is called the story method. The story method expands on look, snap, and connect by creating a story, linking words together. You can use this uh, strategy for recalling grocery store list items or the errands that you have to complete in a day. So one practical application could be that I want to remember my grocery list. I wanna try and remember without writing the words down. So I'm gonna test myself. And the things that I need to purchase are bananas, band-aids, garlic, toothpaste, and some yogurt. So I try to think what story with mental vivid images could I create to remember my list? So this is what I thought of. While the monkey was eating a banana, I slipped on the peel and had to get a Band-Aid from the bathroom for the scrape on my knee. While in the bathroom, I brushed my teeth again because I had eaten garlic and the toothpaste that squeezed out looked like vanilla yogurt. So again, I have to think to myself about the banana being eaten by the monkey. I slipped and fell. I had to get a Band-Aid for the scrape on my knee. While I was in the bathroom, I brushed my teeth again because I had garlic. And the toothpaste that squeezed out when I was brushing my teeth looked like yogurt. So this is just a fun way to remember a grocery list by creating the story method. And the Memory Fitness Program and Dr. Small's book offer other advanced strategies that you can use to improve your memory. So I hope that these um, natural tips and then some of these memory fitness strategies have helped you. And if you have any questions about the presentation or about our services, please contact our navigator, Nicole, at 336-545. 5377. You can also visit us at our website for some upcoming classes and our support groups, www.well-springsolutions.org. Thank you so much, everyone, and be well, and until next time. Take care.